The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 252 Elevator Escape Valet clung tight to a chain as it rattled, dragging around a distant pulley and yanking her upwards at a far faster speed than she could climb by hoof. Catwalks and pipes whizzed past as she fought to hang on, and only a tingle from a cutie mark allowed her to jerk to the side, avoiding having her ride disintegrated by Sniper Pony. She had a good fix on his location, and one of them gone. She could see the elevator. It was still above her, but she was gaining on it, and Starlight's shield was holding. Five Pegasi buzzed near it, alternating between wailing on it with their wimpy black clubs and simply waiting for it to break. There was two more than last time, but not three more. Even if there were no reinforcements, there was an escaped attacker unaccounted for. Sniper Pony shot again, far enough above her that there was nothing she could do as he severed the long chain she was riding upwards. Converting her momentum, she flipped and landed evenly on a dormant platform. He was getting annoying. He was also watching her, only half a level above and three catwalks away. Valet grinned. She launched off her platform, using a hanging bundle of cables as a landing point to extend her jump, rolling smoothly onto a walkway. There was a pipe she could run along to the second. Cackling as she ran, Valet leapt as the pipe exploded in a shower of plasma behind her and falling away, letting her momentum carry her to the catwalk. She was close enough to see his eyes, and they looked scared. He was... wait, he was a unicorn? Up close, it was obvious Sniper Pony wasn't a Pegasus. His long-barreled launcher was mounted to a stand but swiveled and aimed by a cloud of green telekinesis originating from a point on his head. That wasn't fair. The defense force was supposed to be all Pegasi. Well, it was unfair for him, at least. No wings, no chance to fly away if she got too close, and he didn't look nearly as acrobatic as her. The stallion struggled to aim at close quarters while Valet searched for a way across the final gap, eventually giving up and abandoning his launcher, racing down a catwalk to the drill column and getting decked out of nowhere by an earth pony wearing a hard hat who was thrice as beefy as he was. There you are, varmint, the mine technician roared, slugging the unicorn again as a squad of backup arrived, toting welding torches and pipe wrenches and furious expressions on their soot-stained faces. You're with those roughhouses for damaging the equipment. The defense force sits around hogging resources all day while they're supposed to keep us safe and it's bad enough, but now you're breaking the machines? Uh-oh! Blake grinned, ducking behind a thin support pillar. She had hoped to commandeer Sniper Pony's launcher to try to knock some things down on the Pegasi chasing the elevator, but it looked like that was firmly out of the question. The core was mostly shut down, but the workers left inside didn't seem to take kindly to the collateral damage the fight was causing, and since they couldn't fly or be acrobatic and nimble, that was good for her. Sniper Pony actually started fighting back, shielding himself with a pulse of telekinesis and a dodge, then yanking away a weapon and tripping a pony who was trying to flank him. Seriously? The ponies she had just gone one versus ten against were themselves willing and able to fight a mob solo? Valet whistled. She was almost tempted to jump in and even the odds just to see what would happen if he hadn't just been shooting at her and her friends weren't still under attack. He could reap his own reward. She had an elevator to catch. Valet raced up a steep, swaying bunch of cables, its incline just gentle enough that she could get purchase on the ties holding the cables together without sliding back down. She was gaining on the elevator again, but suspected it was going slower, possibly as a safety mechanism and possibly because of the weight of Starlight's crystal. The same five Pegasi kept haunting it, some flying underneath inside the elevator shaft and others rising along outside, hounding the exit stations as it passed. They had risen far enough that a glass window wasn't shattered anymore and no longer had a turret, but that didn't stop them from trying. Time to rejoin the fray. Shadow sneaking up a lengthy crevice, kicking off a hanging air duct and landing on a bridge to an elevator terminal, Valet steadied herself just as the five reached her level. Yay, lemon bag! she shouted, standing aggressively despite the burning in her legs from so much rapid climbing in an already roasting environment. You totally forgot me down there! What gives? You totally forgot me down there! What gives? The free Pegasi outside the elevator shaft spun on her landing, as the two within bludgeoned the door until it shattered and they could slip through to rejoin their companions. Even as a team of five, they looked uncertain as they faced down Valet, clearly remembering that they had been far more numerous in the battle below. Well? Valet tapped a hoof in annoyance. What gives? Do you guys have an extra special bee for something? Just felt like targeting me on your own time? Giving me a proper farewell? How do you chicken out of a fight and go after your enemy's friends the moment the going gets rough? It's called taking hostages, one pick as a spat, stepping forward into a position of command. 
We asked you to surrender, and you refused. We're not interested in your friends, just you. It's our job. He spat again. Please surrender. I don't want to lose another two for any of my friends over this Eber. Technically, your job is to protect Anridge, Valle pointed out. Unless you're secretly cultist or something crazy posing as defense force, which I totally would believe given your competence. You want me to leave you alone? Easy hey, solution. Leave me alone first. The lead Pegasus shook his head. The elevator rose higher. In all the climbing they'd done, there were only three levels from the top of the shaft, and if she could distract the Pegasi a little more, the elevator would be out of the flame district. No, huh? Valet took a warning step forward. So, where's your buddy? There's one fewer of you than there should be. Summoning reinforcements? Running for the hills at my awesome combat skills? Or did I take him out so anticlimactically that I don't even remember fighting him? The Pegasi looked goaded. Good, she could handle him. Maple and Gerardo probably couldn't. He's standing to our injured, a Pegasus said irately. Like a responsible member of a team. We don't like taking losses. Every single pony counts. Valet rolled her eyes. Ooh, noble. What, are you trying to guilt trip me out of fighting you? Have you even heard of my reputation? No, seriously, have you? She leaned forward, squinting. If I didn't recognize some of you, I'd say you guys can't be defense force. No, hey, I've always had a better memory for mayors. But who cares? Ready to continue thumping heads? The Pegasi snorted, staring at her and not charging. They were stalling too, Valet realized with a shiver. And whatever it was for had to be more important than letting Starlet get away and risking the minor ponies finding them. As if she'd let that happen. Well, it's been fun. Valet shot her wings out, visibly wincing on her right side. Bye! She leapt straight up. And the surprised Pegasi, having caught on or otherwise been informed that she couldn't fly, scrambled into the air to intercept her. But rather than flapping, she folded her wings again, simply leaping in place and then darting forward along the ground. The Pegasi were unprepared as she scooted on Letha, beelining straight for the broken doors to the elevator shaft. Mm. Valet grunted in exertion as she clung spider-like to the jagged, hewn wall of the elevator shaft interior. It was a long way to the bottom and falling was the last thing she wanted to do, but she had an opportunity to get them all off her tail and prevent them from following and she was going to take it. With the, strain, with the strain of burning muscles, she leapt off the wall, reaching the far side of the tunnel and digging in again with moderate height gain. Then she did it again. Then four pegasi zoomed in beneath her. Go! Valet dropped down from the wall, kicking one squarely in the head and leaping back off, resuming her perch on the wall's other side. Unfortunately, it didn't knock them out and send another diving to catch them. She just needed a little bit of distance. Then, the lights went out. Valet blinked in surprise. A large portion of the upper core had dimmed, plunging the elevator shaft into enough darkness that she could shadow sneak. That was convenient. Now she could swim up the walls, which was faster, safer, and easier than jumping. Smirking, she sank into the shadows as confused Pegasus shouts rang out. Maybe she'd get to save some stamina for later after all. One Pegasus shot past her, streaking upward. The other three hovered down below. Where was the fifth? Didn't matter. Obviously, they were trying to pincer her somehow, heading her off from above and below, but her cutie mark wasn't tingling, so she had nothing to fear. She swam upwards, passing under the elevator station, and the next, and eventually reaching the stone ceiling where the glass disappeared and the tunnel became rock all the way around. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. Suddenly, her mark suspended time and she halted with a gasp. What was going on? Below her, far below, the free pickets I waited. She could see a pony above flying back down the tunnel, but she was in the shadows. She ducked in all the way in regardless. There shouldn't be anything the oncoming pony could do. The pony held their pitiful black club straight forward like a blaster, and when the end flashed, emitting no projectile and a very large amount of light, forcefully ejecting Valet from the wall. The cheating! She barely had time to yell before the pony plowed into her, delivering a ferocious punch to her already sore belly and setting her flying downward toward a waiting pegasi. The body pressing her downwards was the same size as her, she realized with a flash, as they passed back into the glass portion of the elevator shaft and the waiting pegasi streaked up to meet them. That meant she was a she, and might be cute and cuddly, but more importantly, wasn't that a strength for weight advantage like the stallions were? 
Valet grabbed a hoof that was pushing her as they fell, yanked the mare out of a flight pattern and grappled her sideways such that she was pinning both of the mare's wings awkwardly against her sides. They spun out, and just before reaching the stallions, Valet was able to kick off the glass, shadow sneaking in, forcing both of them into the wall. Disorientation from having her head submerged immediately caused the mare to writhe furiously, and Valet fought to keep a hold on her as the stallions approached from below and the tingling in her cutie mark increased. She saw them charging their flash clubs, preparing to flush her out, and leapt at the last second, flinging the flashing pegasus into their faces and causing significant team damage as they were kicked and bucked and tried to get a grip on their friend. It was a perfect time to get ahead and test out her idea. Fresh with the knowledge of what the flash clubs really did, and slightly annoyed that they were even more specifically designed to fight her than she fought, Valet smirked and pulled out the stun grenade from her hat. It used a sedative gas. It used a sedative gas, and in an enclosed, unventilated shaft, her cutie mark gradually buzzed once the pin was pulled as the grenade timer wound down and down. She kept a careful eye both above and below to ensure it wasn't masking any threats. The pegasi below were ascending again, and nothing was coming from above. When the grenade was a second away from explosion, she flung it downward, and it detonated, filling the tunnel with a faint haze. The first stallion charged into it and took about a second to faint. He landed on the second one, who was swiftly losing consciousness. The third one and the mayor were far enough back to realize what was happening and be saddled with the task of catching their friends. Fully cackled as she rose. The tunnel was blocked, and even if those two felt like holding their breath and flying through it, they still had to go back and set down their allies, and would then be two against one. Still, that mare had come from above, and she hadn't seen a trace of the stallion who had stored away ahead of her. She could smell Starlight somewhere above her in the distance, but that meant the very best she could hope for was that there were enemies between them and her, and they could easily have been captured. She swam furiously upward. They weren't out of Iron Ridge yet. End of chapter 252